Hi, this is uh, Daniela DeMarco and you're seeing on camera at Margie Urban. We are coming to you today from the New York State CEI Sexual Health Center of Excellence um, to talk a little bit about providing um, sexual health care during the COVID-19 pandemic. Can you tell us about your uh, sexual health clinic and things that have been uh, going on? Sure. So, um, well, our sexual health clinic, and for, for those of you not familiar with that term, it used to be called an STD clinic. It's a public government run uh, free walk-in clinic in our setting. So uh, not really any appointments uh, per se. And we provide diagnosis and treatment for sexually transmitted infections, as well as uh, treatment for exposure to infections, HIV testing, and um, post-exposure and pre pre-exposure prophylaxis for HIV, usually called PEP or PrEP. Great, and are people still coming in during the pandemic? Yeah, well, actually they are. We, we continue to be open and uh, there's been sort of, I would say kind of an evolution of people coming in. When this first started and uh, social distancing and, and really the idea of uh, remaining at home, New York pause as it's called here, uh, we had kind of a little bit of a rush of people that were afraid that we would close. And then it evolved to mostly people who had symptoms, uh, either discharge or some sort of genital sore or ulcer. And uh, now, after about six weeks of this, I'd say we're starting to see people who are looking just for a checkup. So they, they don't actually necessarily have symptoms. Those people are still coming but we are also seeing people who are concerned that um, maybe they need some testing, uh, even though they feel fine. Got it. And in terms of the patients coming in, how are you uh, managing them? What kind of changes have you made? Yeah, we've made lots and lots of changes um, and almost weekly really as this pandemic has evolved. And I guess in the sort of big picture, we've tried to transition to not being entirely walk-in and to go to more telephone-based services, providing what's called telehealth, either uh, with patients calling from home and, and never actually leaving their home, and hopefully we can take care of them by phone, or even if they've made it to our location, but, but uh, are uh, in a car, sometimes we'll even have a visit uh, with them in the car. We, um, we've sort of had two guiding principles. If, if you've been, socially distancing and we are able to manage you remotely, we, we do that. And if you've ventured out, particularly if you don't have a car, so you really have been out in the community or you took public transportation and arrive at the door, we uh, attempt to still see those patients on site and provide the most comprehensive service. We have made one big change that is um, uh, uh, really new for us is, is not offering routine STI screening in people who feel well, who don't have any particular exposure. So uh, that's a change for us. And, you know, maybe at some point soon, we'll, we'll go back to offering that. But right now our on-site visits are limited to symptoms or if you were contact to someone or some other particular uh, problem, um, like you have abdominal pain or uh, you might have syphilis. So you have something very specific, but not just routine checkups. And are there things um, patients should do before coming in? The best thing to do, I think no matter what healthcare setting you're, you're looking at, would be to call first. And generally, most health systems are screening to see if you might actually have the symptoms of COVID. Even if you arrive on our site, we're taking your temperature uh, before you enter the building because uh, everyone around you would need to take special precautions if you did have those particular symptoms. But calling first and getting the direction of whether you could have a telehealth visit and maybe an e-prescription that would treat whatever the problem is, and you could avoid that visit into a healthcare system and you know avoid increasing your risk of, of being exposed. Okay. And any advice for clinicians who don't work in public health clinics, but have <coughs> patients who need um, sexual health services? Uh, yeah, there, there really wasn't much for that before, but now there are um, a few uh, published references about uh, adapting your services to, to the pandemic. The CDC has published um, some guidance on what's called syndromic management, so treating over the phone by symptoms. That's at cdc.gov STD. 
A few other uh, STD clinics, public health STD clinics, have published uh, similar guidelines with some variation. And we at the CEI could help uh, set up um, some tailored guidance for your particular location. You can reach us through the CEI line. It's 866-637-2342 with clinical questions about STIs or, or this technical assistance to set up a protocol. I do think there's no one size fits all for clinical settings. It really depends on your setting, what kind of STIs are prevalent locally and how much COVID there is locally. I think New York City is different from where we are, where we have lower rates of COVID. Excellent. Thank you, Dr. Urban. Um, and thank you uh, to the folks watching the video and more to come as we uh, move through the pandemic.